Guys, what's going on? Hello and welcome to Serial of Midnights. I'm Heath and we are talking about Tropic Thunder on the 4K Ultra HD format from Kino Lorber. Kino Lorber has been crushing it lately with the 4Ks, actually for over a year, crushing it with 4Ks. Uh, we're up to like two or three 4Ks a month now and Tropic Thunder has just arrived. I'm really excited about this, but it is a controversial release. Of course it's controversial. It's a controversial movie and now it has a controversial 4K release because here's the thing. There are two versions of Tropic Thunder. There's the original theatrical cut and then there's an extended director's cut. Ben Stiller, the star and the director, put together an extended director's cut. Uh, and I think that's what we've been living with on home media for, you know, since since 2008 or so. Because to my knowledge, I've got the I've got the Blu-ray of Tropic Thunder. I don't think the theatrical cut has ever been in HD on disc before. I think that it has only been that extended cut. Uh, but the theatrical cut is in my opinion, the better cut. And Ben Stiller thinks so too, because the uh, the 4K restoration is for the, uh, the, the theatrical cut only, and it was overseen by Ben Stiller. Uh, so people are like, well, why is the extended cut not in 4K? Because Ben Stiller and Paramount chose not to do that. They chose to do the, the theatrical cut. Kino Lorber doesn't do these restorations themselves. People need to know this. Kino Lorber licenses content from studios, from distributors, from sources, and they put it on a disc. So like the Leone movies that people complain about, if it's got like a, you know, the, the teal wash, Kino Lorber didn't do that. The Restoration House did that. That was done in Italy. This is done by Paramount with Ben Stiller. So they license what is available, and frankly, there is no available 4K for the extended cut because Ben Stiller didn't do that. Uh, so... That's interesting. I think people need to know that. I think the theatrical cut is the better cut. When I, you know, I used to be in a place where I always wanted more of the thing that I loved. You know, give me the extended edition of the Lord of the Rings movies. Give me the extended edition of that thing you do. You know, the Tropic Thunder extended. Now I'm kind of at a point where I'm like, oh no, there was a purity to that theatrical experience. It's it's shorter. It's it's more. It, it, sometimes these these extended cuts, they just you feel them. They they feel a little more. Uh, just kind of decompressed. I think there's purity to the theatrical cut. I guess Ben Stiller does too, but you do have your choice of both, but you only have the 4K for the theatrical cut. So there's a ton of special features here. Everything that was on the Blu-ray has been carried over. There's two commentary tracks. There's one commentary track on the theatrical cut with the stars Ben Stiller, Robert Downey Jr., uh, Jack Black. And then there's another commentary on the extended version with... Lots of people. In fact, I've even got some screenshots of the, the the 4K disc doesn't have. It's got the commentary, but no video features and uh, screenshots of that. Uh, the the extended edition is the disc that has all the the special features on it, and you can see for yourself. I mean, everything has been carried over. If it wasn't on the, there were a few things that were uh, there. People are going to ask about this. There were some things that were on the DVD, and there were some things that were BD Live features. Those are not here. My understanding is that they were not able to be licensed. Uh, again, Kino Lorber licenses things. They do not create, well, they do create things, but they don't create the transfers. These extras are coming from Paramount. Uh, so it, it looks really good. I want to talk about the video quality because that's important with a 4K release. It looks and sounds very good. You've got two choices of audio here. 5.1, 2.0, and then the commentary, of course. Uh, but Tropic Thunder looks really good. It's shot on film, which is the key for me. And this is the dividing line. The more I do these 4K reviews, the more I realize that there are people that aren't super familiar with movies shot on film, and they're judging things based on digital shot presentations. Uh, things with film are going to look different than things that are shot digitally. Uh, things that are shot on film. First of all, this is it does tend to be a little bit darker in some scenes. 4Ks are almost always going to be darker than a Blu-ray. Blu-rays were marketed as like this bright, clear, shiny experience. Blu-rays are not necessarily your source for how a movie is supposed to look. You're supposed to go back to the theatrical presentation, to the original negative, which is what these guys do. So when you when you watch Tropic Thunder, if you think something is too bright, if you think something is too green, if you think something is too blue, if you say, oh, that's too orange, uh, remember, this is what the director thinks this movie should look like. And that's good enough for me. Um, it's the, the 4K criticism online of people that are pulling screenshots of something. This is the thing that drives me crazy. They pull screenshots to make a point. They have isolated one screenshot out of a two-hour movie, and they say, well, what about this? 
Well, that screenshot doesn't tell the story. Also, how did you capture that screenshot? Is it from a Blu-ray? What's the setup? How have you got the color timing? You know, what's your, what's your setup? You can tell all sorts of lies. Screenshots are like Bible verses. You can find one to support any argument you want. Uh, and so I tend to leave it to the cinematographers and the directors to know what the movie is supposed to look like. And I think it's pretty cool that they have the involvement of Ben Stiller for this 4K restoration. Uh, the movie, like I should, I should actually talk a little bit about the movie. I think this movie is really funny as a satire of Hollywood, which is what this is. This is a, you know, I was going to say it was a loving takedown of Hollywood. I don't know that it's loving. Some of it feels a little bit too on the nose. Um, it is a movie making fun of the excesses of Hollywood. The, <laughs> the, the way, like all the stuff with Robert Downey Jr., it's making fun of method acting. All the stuff with Ben Stiller, it's making fun of franchise filmmaking and shallow actors. Uh, the pyro guy, Danny McBride is the pyro guy. Like all this, it's making fun of the excesses of Hollywood. But it's interesting because it's a 2008 movie and anything that this movie was talking about is so much worse than it was when they made this movie. They, we say like they couldn't make that now. Well, they couldn't make Tropic Thunder now for about a bazillion different reasons. For all the stuff that's offensive in it that people, you know, would not take as satire, they would take it seriously and get upset. Well, they did. They got upset at the time too. There was lots of talk about Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal. If, if you have never seen Tropic Thunder, he's a white actor playing a black man, and of course that's problematic. And the movie knows that. That's the whole point. Um, and then there's the stuff with Simple Jack. That's, it's all so, it's all so, like, it's very knowledgeable. Like, well, that's how you can go, you can get an Oscar if you do it up to this point. But if you go too far, then no, you go home empty handed. Um, and then even, but here's the thing, like, it's a, it's a $92 million comedy movie. Like, they wouldn't, that's a reason they wouldn't do that now. Because, first of all, they don't really make comedies anymore. People don't go see comedies. You get a few of them every now and then streaming on, on the on the Pete Boop, the Peacock Beezle Boop, uh, you know the all the streaming services, they'll you know they'll throw one out every now and then, but they don't succeed really. Nobody's spending ninety two million dollars on a comedy movie. Now this it's also like an action satire. It's Apocalypse Now. It's Platoon. It's all these things, but it is essentially a comedy, and uh, we don't seem to want to laugh these days. We seem to take ourselves very seriously. So for a variety of reasons, Tropic Thunder is like this blast from the past that wasn't that long ago but might as well have been three lifetimes ago. So I'm glad to see this getting 4K love. There's been speculation, did, did Paramount license this out to Kino Lorber because they don't wanna, they wanna kinda stand back from any blowback? I don't know, that's total speculation. It's an interesting theory. Uh, kudos to Kino Lorber for getting this out on disc and for presenting us with the two, the two choices of, uh, of viewing options. Right, this does have the alternate, this is the original artwork and this is sort of the revisionist, sort of the, uh, it's like the, the uh, extended edition artwork. We got both of them here. I'm assuming this is going to uh, not be around forever. So if you're a slipcover junkie, you probably want to get your order in quicker, sooner rather than later. Uh, but this is the 4K Ultra HD edition of Tropic Thunder with every Blu-ray special feature, both cuts of the film, but only the theatrical cut in 4K, looking pretty sharp indeed. Guys, that's going to do it for the Tropic Thunder review. If you want to pick this up, uh, I'm going to link to it in the description of this video. Maybe I'll pin it to the top of the comments as well. Uh, so if you if you buy that, you'll be supporting Serial at Midnight because we'll get a you know a, a small percentage on that. Also, if you're watching this video, please subscribe and thumbs this video up. If you appreciate these 4K reviews, the knowledge and sort of the inside information that I try to bring to these reviews, uh, please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. Uh, people say like every day, someone says to me, "Why don't you talk about so and so?" And I do, but they don't see it because they're not subscribed. YouTube serves you more of what you're already watching. So if you're watching unboxings, that's what it's going to show you. If you're watching, you know, uh, the big fresh flavors videos that are an hour long, that's what it's going to serve you. So if you subscribe, you never miss a video and uh, you know everything that's happening with this channel. Guys, thank you so much. What do you think about the movie? Let's continue the conversation in the comments below. Take care. Until next time, I'll catch you later.